So, all right, moving on to the next topic, we have uh, a very interesting demonstration that basically shows a vulnerability in rolling codes. So this is something, can you, do you know what a rolling code is? Uh, not entirely, but I think the premise is that you can append like bits to the end of each other or something like that in order to get like a whole bunch of different codes in the same sequence when replaying something. So explain it better probably. Yeah, so um, if you have something like a Bluetooth or uh, let's just say like a, a radio dongle for like your garage or your car or something like that, that is a short range um, radio frequency uh, opener basically for like your car or whatever else, like it needs to be able to securely communicate a code to the vehicle that is not going to be able to be intercepted and used to open the car. So if your like, um, key fob only put out a single code every time you pressed it, someone could just sit there and intercept it and then be able to you know, figure out what it was and replay that in order to open up your car. And that would obviously be a bad thing. So instead, manufacturers a while ago started switching to something called a rolling code. So a rolling code means that every time you press the key fob, it's generating a valid, but only um, valid one time code. And the car is basically listening for these codes and will only accept a code one time that's generated by the key. So if you click the key three times, it should generate three rolling codes and all those codes would be valid to open the door. But if I intercepted all three of those codes and tried to play them back later, the car wouldn't open because it had already accepted those codes. And these codes are supposed to be um, pseudo random. So they're supposed to be like look random, but they're supposed to be derived by some sort of secret key or whatever that uh, the car will validate. That's the way it's supposed to work, but it looks like that might not be the way it actually works. So what was discovered here was that um, there is a vulnerability in the way that Honda in these cars, um, which apparently go back pretty far, I think it was like back to 2009, all the way up to the current model, or maybe 2020 model, um, only flip a couple bits in order to create their rolling code. And you can just do this yourself on a code that's been captured in order to create a valid code that will open the car. So that is not good. It, it's basically supposed to be a really long uh, like code that gets changed or whatever, but it looks like instead, in this case, they've been using one that doesn't actually require very much cryptography. So you can see the tweet here um, shows a little bit um, about you know what this is, but really this is a CD um, that is related to this. And at the moment, um, it's undergoing reanalysis, which is something that I don't often see. So this is a little bit unusual. We'll have to kind of sit and see like exactly what happens with this because the um, the severity and everything else for this might change. But it seems to say that the remote the remote keyless system on Hondas uh, sends the same RF signal for each door to open request, which might allow a replay attack. And replay attacks are the worst possible scenario in a rolling code. It means you found a way to take a code that should not be valid anymore and uh, use it to open the door. So um, there are some, have been some other attacks against rolling codes. Like, can you think of a way that you might be able to um, open a door that used a rolling code if you had physical access to the key for a while? Uh, probably by cloning someone's like RFID thing or something like that. I'm not sure. So one very tricky way that you can do this, or that's, uh, I think Sammy Kamkar showed um, how to do this. The open sesame attack? I don't know what that is. The garage door? Perhaps. Do you know? care to explain? Uh, I don't know a whole lot about it, but he found an exploit on this very old, like, sort of gaming console that uses RF to communicate between each other. It was sort of like a handheld, like, chat thing, but he found a way to exploit that tool in order to open, like, various garage doors on the same frequency. Ah, no, it's not that one. Dang. So in this one, we use um, a signal cloner. And uh, so just something that can read and then play back um, arbitrary radio signals, nothing special here, and tinfoil. Hmm. That's the secret. So what we do is we take the key and then we wrap it in tinfoil so that the car can't hear it. Basically, we jam the signal so that the car can't hear it. And then we click the button a bunch of times and record all the rolling codes. Now, because the car hasn't heard these rolling codes before, it should be able to accept them, um, which means if we get back to the car and use these codes, we should have as many valid codes as we press to try to open up the car. And of course, if we're if a car gets a little bit smarter and starts using sequential codes, then it it shouldn't 
go back and accept a code um, that was generated before one of the ones uh, that it was last used to open. But a lot of cars don't check this. So that kind of vulnerability means that you can just take the key a very far distance away from the car. And if you copy that code, then it should theoretically be able to open the car door um, because the car hasn't heard it yet. So it doesn't know that it can't use that code anymore. And it just knows that that code's valid. Hmm. So there's a couple of different ways uh, to attack this sort of system. This is super interesting though. So um, if you have a Honda that has keyless entry, mine does not, very sadly, um, please try this. Um, it's because there's a proof of concept, um, it would be really interesting to see you know, if uh, this is actually valid and uh, how to trigger it. So um, unfortunately, I can't try this because uh, my Honda does not have keyless entry. But if yours does, then please give this a try and let us know if it works. And that's all the time we have for this week. I want to thank Zam in particular again for bringing a lot of these stories to our attention. His outrage in particular over the Autodesk one I think resonates very well with a lot of users. So I'm glad we included that. And if you feel like we missed anything or if you have any questions from this stream, make sure to leave them on the YouTube channel so we can answer them during the Q&A next week. All right, I think that's all we have time for. Thank you to everyone in the stream and we'll see you next time. Bye.